Hello class, this lesson is titled Trapezoids and Kites. Um, well, we've been dealing with specific quadrilaterals, specifically parallelograms, rectangles, a rhombus and a square, and if you recall, a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square are all specific types of parallelograms. Opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides um, are congruent. Well, the other two specific quadrilaterals are trapezoids and kites, and these are not parallelograms. First, let's talk about trapezoids. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides are called the bases. So, again, these two that are parallel are the bases, in which the two that are not parallel are called the legs. So, things to keep in mind, so the verbiage is important. <clears throat> now, if the two legs were congruent, hypothetically, if these two were congruent, then it would be referred to as an isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid. All right. Now, let's take a look here. Um, a couple things about an isosceles trapezoid specifically is that the two base angles connected to one of the parallel sides, those are always going to be congruent on an isosceles trapezoid. That means these two up here, those two angles will also be congruent to each other. Now since, <clears throat> sorry, now since GH and FG here are parallel, it would make this a transversal, so these two angles, angle G and angle F would be supplementary. Now that's going to be true for any trapezoid, that the two angles will be supplementary from one base to the other along one of the legs. But isosceles trapezoid, again, has congruent angles uh, connected to each base. All right, now, um, <clears throat> sorry about that, I have a little sore throat right now. Now the diagonals, the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid will be congruent. So here, QS will be equal to RT, or sorry, congruent to RT. So that's something to keep in mind as well. That will come into play later. So here it says, find each measure. Find the measurement of angle T. Again, like we said, that if it's an isosceles trapezoid, that angle V and angle T must be congruent. So in this case, angle T is going to be 60 degrees as well. Here we have, uh, for problem B, you're looking for uh, angle Y. But notice the angle that you're given is not along the same parallel uh, base. It's on the opposite base. So again, those two will be supplementary. So to find angle Y, you just do 180 minus 68, which gives you 112. So the measurement of angle Y is equal to 112 degrees. All right? Let's take a look at the next problem. A quadrilateral. A, B, C, D has vertices of um, those following coordinates. Here it says show that A, B, C, D is a trapezoid and determine whether it is an isosceles trapezoid. So first we want to plot the points. So A is negative 3, 4, so back 3, up 4. So a little off here. Sorry if it's sloppy. B is 2, 5, so over 2, up 5. Again, this is A. This is B. C is 3, 3 and D is negative one zero. So if you connect these, the question is, um, is it a trapezoid? Now, again, definition of trapezoid, you have to have one set of sides that are parallel, only one set of sides that are parallel. Um, now, if you look at A, B, and D, C, it's definitely obvious that they are not. Uh, parallel, they will run into each other at some point. The question is AD and BC. Are those parallel? Well, you want to find the slope. If they have the same exact slope, then you know that they're parallel. So we'll do rise over run. So if you go from A to D, you go down one, two, three, four, over two. So down four over two, which is negative two. Now B, from B to C, you go down one, or down one, down two, over one. So notice here they have the same exact slope, which means they are parallel. So these two are parallel, uh, proving that it is a trapezoid. Now the question is, is this an isosceles trapezoid? 
Well, the way we do that is we have to find the distances of AB and DC. Well, the only way to do that is to use the distance formula. And um, don't forget the distance formula is x2 minus x1 squared y2 minus y1 squared, and the square root of the whole thing. So let's go ahead and find AB first. So x coordinate for A is negative 3 minus x coordinate of B, which is 2 squared plus the y value of A minus the y value of B squared. And we're going to go ahead and take the square root of the whole thing. Now negative 2, sorry, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, but when you square it, you get a positive 25, plus 4 minus 5, which is negative 1, but when you square it, you get a positive 1. So here you have root 26. So the question is, is DC also root 26? Well, let's go ahead and find that. So x coordinate of D, which is negative 1, minus x coordinate of C, which is 3, squared, plus y coordinate of d minus the y coordinate of c squared. So negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, but when you square it, it gives you a positive 16, plus negative 3 squared, which is 9, which gives you root 25. So although they're extremely close, they are not the same. So therefore, this is not an isosceles trapezoid. So yes, it is a trapezoid, but no, it's not isosceles. Again, the two legs must be uh, the same distance. Now this next problem says the mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segment that contains, or sorry, that connects the midpoints of the legs of the trapezoid. So the key here is that this, these two points are midpoints of the two legs. And so when you join those, uh, that's called the mid-segment. Now the thing about that is that will always be parallel to the two bases as well. Um, now, the length of this, of the trapezoid, or the mid-segment of the trapezoid, is you take the two bases, you add them together and cut it in half, and that will be the length of the mid-segment itself. So let's take a look at a problem here. In this figure, LH is the mid-segment of this trapezoid. What's the value of x? So again, the fact that 15 is the mid-segment, we'd set up our equation. The mid-segment is equal to half of the sum of the two bases. So you need to solve for x, therefore you need to get this one half out of there. So I'm going to multiply by 2 to cancel it out, which leaves us with 30 is equal to x plus 18.2. And your last step is to subtract the 18.2. Again, I apologize for this handwriting. Therefore, x is going to be equal to 11.8. Okay? Again, uh, don't automatically put x by itself. The formula is the mid-segment is equal to one-half the sum of the two bases. Now, what if it's on a coordinate plane? So the trapezoid here is shown below. If FG is parallel to AD, what's the coordinate of point G? Well, again, if FG is parallel to AD, um, notice it would be parallel to this base as well. The fact that if you look at the top row of points, you have A0, 9, and 18. That just shows that these distances are equal. That means these two distances are equal, which means G would be the midpoint of D and C. So all you have to do is apply the midpoint formula to find that coordinate. So X plus the other X value over 2, comma, Y plus the other y value over 2. And again, I got those coordinates from D and C. So there, that gives us 21 over 2, which is 10.5. 4 plus 0 is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So this would be the coordinate for G. 
Now, word problem. A set of stairs leading to the entrance of a building is designed in the shape of an isosceles trapezoid. So right there. Oh, sorry, with the longer base at the bottom of the stairs and the shorter base at the top. So again, you have this set of stairs going upwards in the shape of a trapezoid. Not only that, it's an isosceles trapezoid. All right. In the bottom, if the bottom of the stairs is 21 feet wide and the top is 14, find the width of the stairs halfway up the top. So basically, we're talking about the mid-segment. Find the mid-segment. And again, we just apply our formula. <clears throat> Sorry. The mid-segment is half of the sum of two bases. So that gives us one half of 35. And half of 35 is 17.5. There you go. Feet. Since we're dealing with the word problem, it's always nice, always good to put your units of measurement. All right. Now let's talk about kites. So what is a kite? Now a kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. That's the key here. The opposite sides of the kite are not congruent or parallel. So these two sides are not congruent nor are they parallel. So it's the sides that are next to each other, the consecutive sides that will be congruent to each other. Now some characteristics about a kite is that they're diagonals and this is the absolute key to the kite is that the diagonals are perpendicular. So make sure you remember that the diagonals are perpendicular. Not only that, the two angles that are in between the non-congruent sides so, in this case, J and L. The two angles that are in between the non-congruent sides will be congruent to each other. So, K and M are not congruent to each other, but J and L are. And one last thing um, here with the diagonals is the diagonal that's extending between the congruent sides, so here, A, C, will bisect the angles that it's hitting. That means this angle and this angle will be congruent. These two will be congruent to each other. The other angles from the other diagonal are not bisected, so not the same case. All right, so here, if this is a kite, find GFJ. Well, it still is a quadrilateral, which means it still adds up to 360. So if you add the 128 and the 72, you get 200. So those top and bottom angles, G and J, add up to 200 degrees, which leaves us with 160 left because, again, a quadrilateral adds up to 360 degrees. Well, this is, the 160 is angle F and angle H combined, but, like we just said, um, those two are congruent. So you just need to divide that by two to find one of the angles. So in this case, the measurement of angle GFJ would be 80 degrees. So this would be 80, and that would be 80. All right, because again, they have to add up to 360. <clears throat> All right, now let's not talk about angles. Let's talk, talk about distances. So we, on this problem, we're trying to find ZY. And like I said before, the key is that this is a right angle. The diagonals are perpendicular. If that's the case, since that's the case, um, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find a third side. Um, let's let's uh, use a little x here. In which the Pythagorean theorem, again, recall that it's, it's leg squared plus leg squared equals your hypotenuse squared. So in this case, that's 64 plus 576 equals x squared. And then we're going to add those together, <clears throat> excuse me, which is 640 equals x squared. But you don't want to leave a square there, so to get rid of a square, you got to root it. And the square root of that, if we go to the nearest tenth, would be 25.3. Okay? So again, diagonals are perpendicular, which means you can create a right triangle there. If 
you know two sides of a right triangle, you could always find the third using the Pythagorean theorem. And that's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And the hypotenuse, again, is the one opposite the right angle. So that would be our hypotenuse. Okay. Here, we only got two more here. If angle BAD is 38 degrees and BCD is 50, find ADC. So this whole thing right here is 38. ADC, so this whole angle here is 50. It says find, um, oh, no, I take that back. It's not what it says. It says BCD. This whole angle right here is 50. It wants us to find this whole measurement ADC. Okay. Well, just like the problem, uh, two problems ago, you add these two, the 38 and the 50, which gives us 88. So we're going to take 360 and subtract 88. I put that in the wrong spot. Minus 88. And that would give us 272. But the 272 is this whole angle and this whole angle combined. So what you would do is you would divide that by 2 to figure that out, which is 136 degrees. So ADC is 136 degrees. All right. Last problem, I believe. All right, last problem. Let me clear this out. Okay. It says BT is 5. TC is 8, and we need to find CD. Well, CD is this side right here. Now, if BT is 5, that means TD is 5. Oh, I forgot to bring up one major point, that the <clears throat> diagonal that is extending from the non in between the non-congruent sides, it gets bisected by the other one. So if BT is 5, TD is 5. And notice here that we have a right triangle. So I'm going to redraw the right triangle right here. So this is C, this is T, this is D, and it says that TD is 5. We know that TC is 8, and so we just need to find this distance right here. So again, perpendicular, so we can set up the Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus 8 squared equals x squared. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So that's 25 plus 64 equals x squared. Add those together and you get 89. And lastly, to get rid of that square, you root it. So x is equal to, to the nearest tenth, 9.4. So some key things, again, the major things about a kite is that the consecutive sides are congruent. And again, a huge thing is that that's perpendicular. And that shorter diagonal right here gets bisected by the other diagonal. Okay, the diagonal extending in between the non-congruent sides will get bisected by the other one, but not vice versa. And the main thing about trapezoids is that if it's isosceles, then the two legs will be congruent, and that the isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals, will be congruent as well. Okay, well, good luck with that.